Okay, ten. ten. Therefore, the moon over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. Eleven, and I called for a draught upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon Amen. all the labor of our hands. Amen. God bless you. So we are considering uh, uh, point one. It said the consequences of neglection. So I'm still going to read a guy again, not a guy, the consequences of neglection. And uh, you can see where we read, if you read from verse one, how the people abandon the house of God, abandon the things of God and begin to pursue their own things. So uh, point one says the consequences of neglection. So I will be reading that a guy six again. I read from here in Jesus name, a guy one six. He said, Ye are so much, and bring in little. Yeah, ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is no warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put in, put it into a bag with hope. I will read now. He said, Ye look for much, and lo, it come to it came to, to lead you, and when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? Why? He said, Say the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own houses. So, because of time, I would have you know, ask us to read from this one so that we'll get proper understanding. But if you have your time, you can read it so that you get more understanding. The reason why uh, this uh, God was talking to his people like this. He said, why? Says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is waste. Everybody is running their own thing. And the house of God lies in waste. Everybody is pursuing their own thing. They are, you know, they are, uh, 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 living in their houses, living in their mansion, while the house of God is lying with nobody care about God. After, after God, if you read from verse one, that after God have delivered them, they forgot the Lord, you know, because we easily forget the Lord when things are now going well, when things are now, you know, moving fine, we easily for, forget God, you know, and when things are going, uh, when we are in, in difficulties, we make a lot of promises. I will do this. If God do this to me, do this for me. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But when things are not moving fine, people can easily forget God. God was actually telling them, look at. You people are running your own things. You forget my house. You abandon my house. You abandon my house and begin to run your own things. Okay, let me read. He said, let me read from verse 3. He said, then came the word of the Lord by Agai, the prophet, saying, it, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your, in your Zion's houses, that is mansion, your, your houses, and this house lie waste? Now, therefore, thou says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. And the Lord is saying, consider your ways. He said, you have so much because, because it, Though you are running etasketa, you are running, you are pursuing the things of this world. You are running your own thing, yet you are not satisfied. Don't you think that there is a problem? What, why? Don't you think that there is, there is, that you are lacking something? You are, you are pursuing the wealth, you are pursuing everything, you want to be satisfied, yet you, you spend all your time, you spend all your strength, yet you have not, you are, you have not enough. You are not satisfied. Praise the Lord. Mm. Yet you are not satisfied. You seek to have much. You have not much. You seek to have everything. Yet you, 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 you use all your strength. You can till the land. You use all your strength to have everything in this world. Yet you are not satisfied. Because he said, why? He said, yet look for much. And lo, it comes to lead you. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? Says the Lord of hosts, because 
of my house that is waste. This is clear. You know, you don't even need any more interpretation on this. He said, because my house is lying waste and you are pursuing your own things because I am your God. You must obey because I am your God. You cannot abandon my own thing and begin to do your own thing because I create you for my own glory. So it is a must. So let us uh, open to the book of um, um, Micah. Micah 6. Micah 6. We are reading uh, 15. We are considering the consequences of neglection. So now let us read Micah 6, verse 15. If you are there, you can read. God bless you. That shall snow, that shall sow, but that shall not reap. Thou shalt trade the olives, but thou shalt not anoint thee with oil and sweet wine, but sh sh shalt not drink wine. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. You can see that it is very, very dangerous to neglect what God, I mean, neglect the, what, what, the, 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 the word of God. Because God knew, God, these people, God, after delivering them, after bringing them out, after all God have did for them, they abandon the work of God and begin to do their own things and begin to do their forgotten that God, you know, God called them my own people. You must serve me. You must serve me. But they abandon the things of God and begin to pursue their own things. So this is, you know, you can see what God is telling. They said, thou shalt sow, but thou shalt not reap. You know, it is not a cause. It is the word of God because God is a businessman. There's no two ways about it. God is a businessman because we cannot forget what God did for you. Because the reason why he delivered them, the reason why God delivered them from the land of Egypt, from bondage, it was for his own glory to so that they would come and serve him in all, with all their substance, with everything, with their life, because he created them for his own glory. Praise the Lord. He has chosen them. Praise the Lord. He said, yes, so, yes, thou shalt sow, but thou shalt not yeah. reap. Thou shalt tread the olives, but thou shalt not anoint thee with oil, because he's not going to eat nothing. And sweet wine, but thou shalt not drink wine. You can see. But they are using their own strength. They are doing, doing everything possible to have much. And the Lord is saying, you will not be satisfied until you return back to me. Praise the Lord. Okay, let us see the, the book of... We are going, let us open to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 38. And see what God is telling us. Deuteronomy 28, verse 28. Verse 38, sorry. 28, 38. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the feed, and shall gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. That is the consequences. That is the consequences of neglecting the work of God, neglecting the house of God, neglecting what God has called us to do, neglecting the will of God. That is the consequences. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the feed. And thou shalt gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. That is the word of God. That is the consequences of neglection. Okay, let us open to the book of um, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 2. Sorry, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17. We are considering the consequences. Isaiah 48, 17. Talk yes. said the Lord, great demon. Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Praise the Lord. You can see he said, Talk says the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou should go. You cannot do your own things. If you want to make, if you want to be the, if you want to have much, 
you need to commit everything into the hands of God. If you want to have much, consider your way. If you want to have much, consider your way because he's saying that he's the, your God, your redeemer. He's the one that can teach you. If you want to prosper, God is the one that can bring you into prosperity. God is the one that can lead you the way you should go. God is the one that will give you that inspiration of what to do. And when you do it, everything will be perfect. You cannot do things on your own because he has chosen you so be, he have chosen you, he have chosen you because God, you know, when God delivered those people, when God delivered those people, he asked them that they will, uh, uh, um, that they are going to serve him. That is the reason why he delivered them, that they are going to serve him in everything. They will not bow down to any other God. They will not do any other thing. So he gave them commandments. He gave them what to do. He was leading them all the way through. But yet, these people, they are still stiff neck, neck people, you know? So God is, God is not happy when people begin to neglect things. When God speaks, you, you wave it off. When God tells you to do something, you are saying, no, you want to do your own things, you know? But at the end of the day, all the strength you have used, you, 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 you look for much, you, you gather little. You look for, for, for warmth, there is no warmth. You are looking for so many things at the end of the day, all will come to nothing because that is the consequence of neglecting the will of God. Praise the Lord. Is, are we, okay, let us open to the book of Proverbs 3, verse 6 to 9. Proverbs chapter 3, we'll, we'll, verse 6. So nine. If you are there, you can read, please. Yes, sir. Okay. Proverb yeah. three. Oh, the way. Yeah. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct the path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. And depart from evil. It shall be it shall be a head to the near, a moral to the bones. Honor the Lord with their substance and with their first fruits of all their increase. Praise the Lord. That is the word of God. That is the commandment of God. There is nothing like you take this one, no, because you are going to take this one and remove this one. Because God has chosen you for his, for his own glory. God created you for his own glory. He has chosen you as a people to, 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 to worship him, to, to serve him in everything, in every way, with all your life, with all your strength. He said we should, in all our ways, we should acknowledge him. We should always put God first. When we put God first in our life, things will be going well. Not on our own things. We, we cannot lean on our own understanding. Praise the Lord. We cannot lean on our own understanding. He said, honor the Lord, in verse 9, honor the Lord with all the substance, with the first fruit of all the increase. Praise the Lord. So, the, yeah, because of time, I would have, if you have time, you can read uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 11. So, let us move, quickly move to the other one. Uh, point two now. He said, the benefit of ob obedience the benefit of obedience. That's point two. So we are going. We are still going to Deuteronomy 28. We read from verse one. We just read one. But if you have time, from yeah, we read one. Deuteronomy 28. We just read verse one. Then we move up further to the other verse. To the other and shall, chapter. And it shall come to pass. Okay. If that's a hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command these these days, that the Lord of God will set thee on high above all nations of the heads. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You can see he said, and it shall come to pass if thou will hearken, if thou will have if thou will abandon all the things, all your things that you are pursuing and consider your way and return to God and begin to obey the word of God and begin to do the things which God has asked you to do. He said, all oh, this blessing, you can see from verse 1 to 14, the blessings are there, which God, if you can see it by disobeying, if you see the disobedient part of it, the causes are much, very, very much, very, very much, the causes that God, so it is very, very dangerous 
to, you know, to disobey God. So we are going to read, let us read um, Philippians 4, 19. Okay. Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all you need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, but my God shall supply all that needs, all, your, all that you need according to his riches in glory. God is the owner of everything. God created everything. If you read, if you read uh, 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 Psalm 24, verse 1, it said, the earth is the, the Lord. Lord and his fullness the earth, mm -hmm. the word, and they that do it the earth. Everything, including you, including what you are pursuing, belongs to God. So tell me now, if you are bad on God, you are using your strength, you are using everything, you are gathering and gathering and gathering at the end of the day, what if you live not to enjoy those things? So if you really want to be blessed, if you really want to benefit, if you really want the promises of God to be fulfilled in our life, in this, there are so many promises in the word of God, in this Bible we are holding. There are so many promises there are so many benefits we can have with that because you cannot be pursuing your things, your own things, and be asking God, abandoning the things of God, and be asking God to bless. It is not done. God is a businessman. God is a businessman. So you cannot abandon the things of God and begin to, you know, he said, bring your strong arguments. What are you going to, what, what is the argument? You know, people, because we are quickly to forget where we are coming from, where God took us from. We are quickly to forget that is human being, you know. Human, human being are the most they are the most difficult thing to deal with, deal with on this earth. They can quickly switch. They can quickly switch. So you know, you can say our God is a merciful God. If we should, if God should deal with us the way we treat Him, nobody will remain on this earth, and He can do it. But no, He's a merciful God. That is why He's God. He cannot. He's not a man. Because when man gives you something, if you, if you misbehave, that thing he gives to you will come and collect it. He will send you back. If it, back. If he gives you a house to live on, you misbehave and you, you give instruction to a human being, will give instruction to you, okay, you will do this. You fail to do it. He will come, he will drive you outside. That's, that's human being. But God, God, when it comes to God, God is not like that. He's a merciful God, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. You know? So, okay, let us uh, um, open to the book of uh, Malachi, 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 or, oh, okay, let's, yeah, open to the book of Malachi, we read 11 and 12, just 11 and 12. Malachi to read 11 and 12. Malachi 11, yes. 3, 3, no. 12. Thiri, thiri 11, chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. And I will rebuke the, the devourer for your sake, and I shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine, vine cast her fruit before the time in the feet, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations call you blessed, for ye shall be delighted some land, says the Lord of hosts. Praise the Lord. These are, these are the promises of God. These are the benefits of obeying the word of God, obeying the will of God, obeying what God is asking us to do. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for thy sake. There are so many people that are spending money every day, all the time, spending unnecessary money, unnecessary things. And there are some people, since they were born, they can, they, in fact, they have not been to hospital. Or since, uh, since they gave their life to Christ, they have not been to hospital. They have not, you know, if, you, if God should open our eyes to see the battle, a fight, you will be afraid. You will not ask, you will not, you will not, you will not ask for money. You will not be running after money. You will not be running after the things of this earth. But all you will just be doing, Lord, just protect me. If God should open your eyes, he said, he said you, and I will rebuke the devourer for thy sake, for your sake. You know, he said, he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, 
Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time, says the Lord. And he said, all nations shall call you blessed. All nations shall call you blessed. That is the benefit of obeying God, you know. That is the benefit of obeying God. Psalm, Psalm 23 verse 1 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Because if you are doing the will of God, there is no way God will not take care of you. There is no way God will not take care of your thing, of, mm -hmm. of, of anything that concerns you. There was a, when I was in a, when I was in Italy, there was one pastor, you know, his wife was rushed to, 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 to hospital, but the pastor, he needed to be in church. They went to tell him, your wife, your wife is in the, is, is in labor. You, you have to, you know, you have to come or you have said, no, God will take care of my wife. I have to be about the business of my father. Of the truth. God took care of the, the lady. So there's no way you are obeying the word of God, you are doing the things of God, and God will not take care of your own. You don't need, it's automatic. You don't need to pray too much. You don't need to, to be, it, it, it's automatic because the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and every other thing shall be added to you. Mm -hmm. It is not a mere talk. This is the word of God. So there is, there, is, there is a need of seeking God first. There is a need of putting God first in our life. There is a need of seeing God as number one, as no, our number one priority. There is a need of, you know, putting God, be, letting God be the center of our life. God first before any other thing. Hallelujah. So what is this place telling us? Simply telling us that it is not only you know, it is not only the building of the church, or, but building up ourselves, because the, the Bible says our body is the temple of God. Let us see uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 9, we read 9 and then 16. First Corinthians 3. First Corinthians chapter six. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, first Corinthians uh, chapter three, nine and the sixteen, verse nine and verse sixteen. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God horns boundary, ye are God building. If any man walk about which he has built thereupon he shall receive a reward. Exactly. That is the word of God. That is the word of God. He said, for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. So we are the building, not the church, not the building, not the, not the building and the church. So there is a need for us to build up ourselves. There is a need for us to build our spiritual lives. There is a need for us to, you know, to, to do according to the, you know, according to, 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 to live our lives, to meet the standard of God, because there is no way we can, we can, uh, we can say that we are Christians, we are uh, uh, born again, then we are, we are living contrary to the word of God. So you can see that there is a need, not just building the, uh, the, the, the building, but though the Bible makes us to understand that we should forsake not the assemblies of, uh, to, uh, of, of the saints, but there is a need for us to build ourselves. There is a need for us to live, to meet up to the standard of God. So time will not permit me because <laughs> the time our brother gave to me is, is, uh, is, is up. So Go ahead, uh, five minutes. Go ahead. All right, sir. You see? So there is a need of building up ourselves and then if we read also uh, that first corinthians first corinthians 6 let us quickly read 6 verse 20. for ye have brought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's exactly so our body is the temple of god there's a need to build our body because if you 
once you give your life to Christ, you come to the understanding, you are building up your spiritual life, then you will understand the meaning of building, of, of, uh, of, of you know, of obeying the word of God, of building up the, 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 the temple of God. Because there's no way, when you receive Christ, there's no way you can call yourself a child of God. Then when, whenever the word of God is coming, whenever somebody tells you this is the word of God or preaching the message, the, the, the true message of God, undiluted word of God, you'll be arguing. Because you cannot compromise a, a, a sin. You cannot compromise the word of God. You cannot say, you know, you see, I will take this one, but this one I will leave. There's a need of building up ourselves. Isaiah 43, verse 7. Isaiah 43, verse 7. I quickly read. It said, Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created them for my glory. I have formed him. Yeah, I have made him. God, God created every one of us for his own glory. Brethren, mm -hmm. there is a need to build up ourselves in order to meet up with God's standard. You know, if, according to uh, Romans, Romans 12 verse 1 says that we should, you know, it says that we should, let us open to that place, please. Romans 12, 1. Yes, I beseech yes. you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. We can see that our body actually is where God dwells. But we cannot forsake the gathering of the brethren. Our body said we should present our body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. You know, obeying God's word is very important because we cannot say we are children of God and we are not obeying the Bible. You know, we, can, we are not obeying the word of God. The Bible made it clear that in 1 first, uh, first, uh, first Samuel 15, uh, chapter 15, verse 20, you can see, verse 22 to 23, it said that obedience is better than sacrifice. You know, he said because disobeying is, is, is as sin as witchcraft. You know, stubbornness is, is, is idolatry. If you can read, if you have time, you can read. So disobeying God is very, very dangerous. He said obedience is better, is better than sacrifice. So, so a lot of people make sacrifices without obeying the word. They make sacrifices in ignorance. A lot of people will do something that we think that, oh, we, we want to be generous. But that is not a ticket to heaven. There is a need for us to build of ourselves. There's a need of, for us to, you know, be children of God indeed. So beloved, let us, you know, set our affection on things above, not on things on earth, according to that book of uh, Colossians 3, verse 2. He said we should search, uh, uh, set our affections on things above. There's a need for us to obey the word of God. And there is, it's, it's very dangerous for neglect, to neglect the, the word of God, the will of God for our lives. And I pray that God Almighty will bless this word in our lives in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Over to you sir. God bless you. God bless let's be in the moon. You have heard the message so far. And I believe that the message has opened your eyes to see what God is saying this time. Remember the message you have much but so little. You. you have so much but bring me a little. You have so much, so much knowledge, so much talent. You are so educated, but you don't use your education to glorify God. I believe that uh, because of the time by tomorrow, by God's grace, I want to expand the message again so that uh, the area, the time could not permit our sister to touch so that you can see it proper. And uh, after that, and I believe 
even after uh, this moment, you are seeing where you have put yourself in poverty. You are seeing where you have put yourself in pain. You are seeing where you put yourself in loneliness. You are seeing where you have put yourself right now in sicknesses. You are seeing where you have been working so hard like a jackknife. But at the end of the month, you will not be able to gather anything because of the of disobeying the word of God. By God's grace, by tomorrow, we will really go deeply on this message, a deep message that uh, in the book of uh, Haggai. We need to read the book of Haggai. You can even go ahead this morning and give you the benefit for you to go and read the uh, Haggai. The brother that is uh, writing message, uh, tell the whole people, I said that they should go and read this morning the book of Haggai, chapter one and chapter two. Proper, so that by tomorrow, you will really see this place where, because we are coming back here to really see what the Haggai what the book of Aga is all about. The way you know this, many homes are in trouble. Many children, they are in trouble as a result of what they, they are disobedient, the disobedience of their fathers. And those things are not causing trouble. But tomorrow we will not see it. I want you to bow down your head this morning and look into the message that you have had so far and check your life. Hey, you have so much and bring, bring it lead you, bring it lead you. You check your life in the area of your service, service to God. Do you really serve the Lord in sincerity? How do you serve the Lord? Our sister talk about God is the businessman. Yes, he's a real businessman. A businessman in the sense that uh, he commends this into the hand of his servant. Any of his servant that obey, he bless them. Any of his servant that disobey, he punish them. Mm. Remember that particular when the when the master was going away, and he, he gave a talent to uh, to the uh, to the servant. He gave one five. He gave the other one two. He gave the other one one. But the other one that have one went to go and bury the gift, the talent. Friend, you need to look into your life this morning. And talk to God this morning. Lord, where have uh, we have been in glory so far? Of having so much bringing a little, Lord, forgive me. Then the Lord, if only you are ready to repent today and tell the Lord, I change my way today. Having so much, bringing him a you. There are people that have much if they want to give offering to God. They, plan, they look for recent, they look for tobacco where they can charge recent and give to their children to go and give to God. But you cannot say recent to your father in Nigeria. Friend, right? want you to look into your life. And talk to God this morning and tell the Lord, I am sorry for where I have been. I have been, I have been, I have been wrong. I have been doing evil to you. Forgive me. Pray this morning. Tell the Lord to pity you. As a father pity his children. Now your eyes are open. You are being called in the, in the, to, to go and evangelize. But how do you use your time? Bringing souls to the Lord. How do you do it? Cry to God this morning and tell the Lord to have pity on you. <coughs> Eternal Father, you have heard your word. I say, how so much bring ye a little. Lord, this morning, I ask you, Holy Father, to help me to have pity on me. Where, O oh Lord, I have bring little to you. 
my whole foolishness, for my whole selfish interest. I ask you, merciful Father, to have pity on me and to forgive me. Oh, merciful Jesus, here am I, oh Lord. I pray, Father, where I'll be using my own time for my own selfish interest, not to use it anymore to do your service. I pray you forgive me. Lord, forgive me, O oh Lord, my Lord, and wash me thoroughly. Here are your children having the privilege to hear your word. I pray, Father, that you will show us your mercy. Father, this morning we are repenting for our foolishness. We are repenting for our evil way. Lord, we are making an amendment this morning. Lord, help us, O Lord. Return back, O Lord, my Father, according to your word. Lord, I saw my Father when the people return back to their duty post. Lord, I saw the blessing you release upon them. Lord, because the people know by returning to you, ah, it will bring goodies. Lord, yes, you are a businessman. A businessman, oh, the servant to pay, you bless the servant. Lord, you are not so wicked. You are not a wicked God. Lord, you are a just God. Serve me, I serve you. You dishonor me, I dishonor you. Lord, that is who you are. But foolish people don't understand. Foolish people that are out there say no. To serve God, pray. Lord, to serve you does not pray. Lord, I want to thank you, Father. Bless you for open our eyes. I pray that this message, Lord, we digest inside our heart. We will live according to it, Lord. That at the end, we will have the cause to rejoice, Lord. Lord in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Almighty oh, Father, we want to thank you for your daughter who you have used to bless our soul this morning. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will help her, O oh Lord, more and more, mm -hmm. that whenever we call on her, Lord, she will speak more than this again. Mm -hmm. so bless her with wisdom, bless her with knowledge, bless her with understanding. I pray that no evil mm -hmm. shall go before her. Mm -hmm. Blessing from Father in glory. I pray, O oh Lord, for every member of this group, that this mercy will not stand against us on the last day. Amen. Help us, Holy Father, that at the end, O Lord, of this journey, we will have the cause to rejoice. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Name, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I say, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to bless God.